So guys, we're here on a very cold mountain in North Wales and Alistair is taking photos of our Dirty 130 for Land Rover Monthly cover magazine. So this is going to go on the front cover and it's going to look awesome. So meet Alistair everyone who's currently busy taking photos. And keep your eyes peeled for the episode. Or well, the magazine, should I say. How did you come about choosing Maker for this photo shoot? Um, we're always looking for interesting cars and uh, they're doing really interesting different stuff. Uh, different is good. So here we are doing a full feature on it. And this part of Wales? It was close to the car. <laughs> well, we always look for somewhere where the car's doing something. A Land Rover needs to be off road and here it is doing the do. And we've got a lot of followers on the channel who've got Land Rovers and like taking photos of their Land Rovers. Give us one of your top tips for what, what makes a really good Land Rover photo? You've got to have the car doing something, I think. It's got to look like it's doing something. It's got to look like it's doing what it's meant to do. Yeah, I think that's a really good tip. It's all started working on a series in my dad's shed. I followed my dreams and joined the Marines, serving in Afghanistan. Defenders were always part of me. So here we are, building custom machines with my awesome team in Shropshire. We are Maker. Hi guys, welcome to the channel. This is Maker and I'm Dave. So the last few days we've been flat out on Wombat and here's the video. About to leave. Already packing, come with me. I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. About to see the world in action, what we can be. Life with no distractions. We'll get away. This is what we waited for.
Yep. The idea of the 350 miles then where does that come from well it's just like it's just your average figure of how long it takes you to get to know a vehicle somewhat yeah if you know what i mean it's like like nobody knows this truck it's brand new yeah effectively you know like how these parts and components all work together it's very much i hate to say it's cutting edge it, Really, I mean, what? I've never seen this engine in one of these before. What does this engine normally go in? A Camaro SS, I believe. Well, it's a supercar. Uh, it's an American sports car. car. Yeah, it's a big muscle car. Muscle car. Yeah. It's like where people buy an LS3 and then they choose to supercharge it after market, you know, after the factory supercharge it. This is sort of Chevy's out of the box supercharged version of the LS. Yeah. If you like. But it's like we're about to drive into a fairly busy town now. And I've been through it already. And it's actually not it's not a labour, it's driving through town usually and something like this. You you know it's it's heavy when you go in slow. It's hard, you know, work in the clutch when you're going slow, so on and so forth, because it's got to be focused more to performance or drivability. Finding a good balance in between the two is quite tricky. It doesn't feel like it's pulling us along, though. It doesn't feel like it's grabbing us like I'd expect. No. Well, we put a lot of effort into making sure that the drive lines are bang in line, like more effort than usual to see if it does make a considerable difference in, in general, this, which is what you just said. So it's obvious it does make a big difference. I mean, we're sitting in some traffic lights now and the truck's not shaking side to side. There's a little bit of a rumble, but it's not like Larry. <laughs> Didn't even wake the baby up. No. Yeah, I mean, it, it'll tune itself to a certain extent. It has um, short-term, long-term fuel they're very much active all the time so like that's another reason why we like to put a fair few miles on it before the customer has it back because yeah those first few miles are where any anything that might you know cause a problem is going to happen in those first few miles so it's like we, we stress test it if you like like we run heat cycles on the engine uh, which are following Asperger GM instructions. Like, we do everything on that and then we sort of give it our own sort of trial and error drive. Like, I, like, I like to encourage everybody to drive it because everybody's opinion on what's nice and what isn't nice is different. You know what I mean? If we can get all of our opinions together and we're all Land Rover people, 
and we all like it, then we know we're on the right track somewhat. Like because this is a, a big powerful engine, but we're not always using it for a big powerful engine, it actually is it's quite nice and refined still. Yeah. But usually like with the LSs they run quite hot and they don't like to not be moving. But this one is fine, absolutely fine. It's undercooling, if anything, slightly. Which, which are, at the moment, I'm leaving it as is because, given the time of year, now, if, if we're running slightly cooler now, then that gives us headspace in the summer, where the ambient temperature is going to be generally warmer. So we should, hopefully, I should be about right there. But again, that's something where, why we encourage to bring it back in X amount of miles, because that's something that we can't really preempt, because it is dependent on ambient temperature. And that's when we finished it, that's when we've tested it, that's the data we've got. Brakes work. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel as heavy as it is when you got your foot in it, does it? No. Temptation. It's not fair. So to give you a lowdown about what we're at, what we've actually been doing, so an LSA has never ever been put into a Land Rover Defender before. I think a few people have put it into a Range Rover Classic, but those classics aren't going to be worked. They're just going to be show ponies sat in a, a showroom doing their thing. We actually care about what these cars are used for and what they're worked for. So Sam and the other guys have been crazy in the background, like Sam loves his tech. I love my tech, but Sam's, I'm going to hold my hands up, Sam has looked cleverer than me. Sam understands what intake temps are, he understands what the dangerous problems are when when it all goes wrong and as you see here these extra holes that we added we only added these last week because after taking it out fully loaded with the roll, roll cage on the back loaded up the tank full of fuel full of occupants we actually realized that this car had very bad intake temperatures we can't change that we can't put a lovely big cold air scoop in because it looked hideous banging a big hole in the wing so our air intake is in that top right hand corner but it is getting cold air from the wing but it's not getting enough so we had to go back to the drawing board and we we're like how can we get rid of this heat so sam and dean came up with the idea of opening these holes up and as i'm now we've just been on a good i don't know two hour trip would you say on this and you can feel the heat and it's actually quite nice on this nippy afternoon so it's working we've dropped them down by 80 i think it was 80 percent gain so a drop in temperatures we've gained so this car is staying away from its knock cycle now and it's a lot happier but we couldn't figure this out, we couldn't prior plan this, but now we have. We found it, we figured it out, and the next Defender we do, we know exactly what to do, and we know how to get rid of this heat. But more to the point is, there's been a few niggles with the transmission, so the transmission was getting hot. So we've actually opened up the breather from, I believe it was a 6 mil breather on the LT230 to a 14 mil breather. So we've now got a nice big fat pipe, and it can breathe, and we're not getting the leaks anymore. So, <clears throat> same again, we've never had this issue on another truck before. So this LSA really is banging out the torque, and it brings it in so low down, 
that it is just like, put a smile on your face and I hope it puts a smile on Michael's face when he gets it back. Uh, can you unplug the OBD socket? Seems to start happier. And that battery, doesn't it? Yeah, it's full. So our water temperature is 89 degrees, air temperature is 31. One of these is an automatic, it'd be smooth as hell, wouldn't it? Yeah. So what's the purpose of doing these tests? Um, we just... Well, we're looking for problems, essentially, or, but hoping that we don't find any. So we need to allow opportunity for any problems to arise, like r the running temperature of the engine. Like, have we done enough to keep the temperatures under control? And it's like, given by the data that I'm getting from logging it now, I'm getting deadly accurate readings of what all the water temperatures, oil temperatures, uh, everything that's going on that the ECU can read. I can read it in live time. So, for example, our coolant temperature is right now 90 degrees. So we've been stopped for maybe a minute, two minutes, and we've gone up four degrees. So that's, that's very good. That means our cooling system is preventing the engine warming up even though there's no air running through it, which is exactly what we want. But then at the same time, we're listening for how hard are the fans working in order to keep it at that temperature without air going through it? We're only running one fan at low speed, which means it's not working very hard to keep it cool, which is what we want. Which means that if on a hot day or we start driving it hard or towing or anything like that, when we're demanding more from the engine and therefore putting the temperatures up, we know we've got an entire another fan there that hasn't even come on yet. So if it ever does get warm, We've got another fan, so we've got double the cooling potential. I'd say what's important is driving it in its real environment, isn't it? It's driving yeah. it, driving it in traffic. Yeah. Anyone can simulate anything on a dyno, but yeah. simulating. It's all well and good yeah. on a dyno when you've got a giant fan blowing air through it constantly. But like we, you know, we'll we might come to a stop because we get stuck in traffic. We might be sat there ten minutes. We need to know what it's going to do and how it's going to how it's going to behave being sat still for 10 minutes. I think like last week like we found out we had the high intake temperature so yeah. we looked back at the drawing board and thought why did Camaro and why did Corvette put big holes in the bonnets? And vents. And that's for that exact reason so to get that heat away from that big engine. Yeah. Fun when the torque steer kicks in. <laughs> yeah. When I was coming down that horseshoe pass, I give it, I give it one of them, and then dropped it in. <laughs> I think this is important as well, like the braking system. I can yeah. feel that's solid now. It's just getting better the more them pads are better. Yeah, it is. It's much better. It's immediate now, isn't yeah. it? 
not boring and it's acceptable, isn't it? Yeah, it's like it only loud when you put your foot in it. Yeah. I like the fact that it doesn't drone. Yeah. You know when it's cruising? the day that the steering wheel box that the customer supplied us didn't cancel the indicators and it was driving me mad in the short time I was driving it so I did a simple thing I called Optimil and I ordered a one that worked so yeah it's little things like that simple stupid solve the problem it saves a complaint and I think it was 70 quid so everyone's happy in my opinion yeah so it's finding a problem that exists and yeah it cost me a lot of money to find these problems and sometimes to rectify them but it's more so, I'd rather find them now than later. Yeah. Well, you'd rather me find it than, <laughs> than someone else. Well, what I'll do, Chris, we'll go up to that airfield. So I've, got, I've got to go to go on there. Hello. Is it weird sitting there? Hi, man. Like it's that. Dave. I just spoke to um, Edward. He said it's right to go on the airfield. You haven't looked at my doobry firkins and my stuffs. Yeah. Oh, We've got to go ahead. On. You're cold. Put your heater on in the back here. Come out, full fucking hero. Oh. Sideways around that corner. What's wrong? Th what I was thinking, if you just slide it round and then I did like. You know, driving along kind of thing, and then yeah, because <clears throat> that's where that's where he sends the phone, the thing down. I think that look good there with that backdrop. We've got some naughty clouds behind us. Checky, checky. This one's over, mate. Anyway guys, I've got to get some more road miles on this. We're at 180 now and I've got to get, I want to say 350 on it before I give it back to its client. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.